I think so. They've done that design for the last couple of years for the yeah. Mexico GP. So we um, are I just, hope that they'd be yeah. putting it up this year as well. It's very, um, what do you call it? Very costly being a McLaren fan if you want all the kit because they've got a special hat for almost every race. <laughs> but they're very, they're, they're really good quality. I can't complain. So just like take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just get the just social on the live stream. I will point out we are now live, so hello world. Yeah. I forgot to ask beforehand, but like, is there any rules about swearing? Is there anything we should know about? Um <laughs> probably just Make it not relentless. <laughs> I'll <good>. try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I gotta be honest. I do get, I do get pretty passionate <laughs> about, uh, you know, about F one in general. So, if you know, if 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 there's a coming together, I might end up effing and blinding. And I make no, <laughs> I make no apologies for it. I was going to say, yeah, on the podcast, sometimes we drop the occasional f bomb or um, something mm -hmm. like that. So, so the um, yeah, I have uh, certainly in the past. I've uh, the not not so much the grid talk ones because they're. Um, because they're live, but the ones that I do, because I'm part of the brand called Everything F1, we mm. we record and cut hours. I have listened back to a few things where I've said things and been like, yeah, I'm not surprised that got cut. <laughs> it's just like, I, I, I maybe it's because, you know, I, maybe it's because I'm Welsh and we're very, we're very sort of passionate, we're very passionate people. Um, we do get very involved when we're talking about things. Uh, it's, it's like when I was watching the rugby earlier, you know, just literally 20 minutes ago, I, I was turning the air a little bit blue in my flat, <laughs> it's fair to say. <laughs> and I'm very loud as well. How'd you do the someone? Like, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Perez fan. But for this race, <laughs> if something happens to him, I, I could get right? passionate yeah. about that. Yeah. I, 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 I really like Perez, and I have no shame in admitting that when he won in, in Sakia last year, I was practically crying <laughs> because because it was just because he, he, he's he's so wholesome. But yeah. Uh, oh, I know. It was a long time yes. coming. That's all I'll it was. say with Checo. It was what, 190 odd races, was, wasn't it? Was it yeah. 100, was it 192? Yeah, something it, was, like it that. was 190 something. Yeah. I've got 192 in my head, but that just might be because I use that number a lot in IT. So, And it was also like the perfect, Weird, I know. Um, perfect goodbye to, to racing. To, to racing point, point yeah to that as well because it's like yeah. yeah you'll kick me out of the team but i'm still gonna go out there and win a race for you so yeah and it was a perfect sort of audition piece for red bull as well wasn't it yeah yeah La last the first according to netflix that was how he got the drive anyway i mean obviously <laughs> we obviously. have to believe a hundred percent of what netflix does netflix says, oh, all of the time of course yeah <laughs> Netflix, <laughs> Netflix would never lie and make it up for TV, would they? No, no. people lie on no. television. Absolutely not. Yeah. Well, consider me gobsmacked. <laughs> oh. Ooh, yeah, I think I was going to say, if you want to start to get your sort of socials ready, I'll um, I'll hit record in a few minutes where I give a bit of an intro okay. speech. Um, and then we'll go from there. You'll all, you'll all get a chance to plug your podcast and bits and bobs as well. Obviously, it's not a it's it's not it's not exactly a dictatorship. <laughs> uh, 
I'm currently watching a montage of people spraying champagne and wearing wrestling masks. Yeah, I've just gone into the ad break after that. Yeah. So I'm on I'm on the F1 TV stream and I don't think I'm seeing the same thing as you guys, but it started. Oh, of least. course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I've so got yeah. the sky feed Tom. Oh yeah. Oh, I've got the same one. Yeah. So I, I've I've just got the screen and I've just gone to ads. So I'm a good, I'd say, what, 18, 20 seconds behind you? Yeah, I'm oh, always, sorry. TSN, ugh, it's always behind F1 TV. <laughs> also, like, Shanika and I, for the first few races, um, we had a friend watching, and his stream was so much faster than us. And so when something happened, I think it was Baku, and he's like, oh, did you see that? And we're like, no. <laughs> You'd be like, no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh... <laughs> He was like texting us, and I was like, "Stop texting us!" Because <laughs> he did it once, and then he did it the second time too. Oh, of course, yeah. the second time would have been for Stappen. Yeah, the Verstappen one, yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Terrible. And it's like you get the, the "Did you see that?" But then also the um, "Oh my god!" And you're like, "Okay, why? What? What's happening? What?" <laughs> yeah. All right, now I, I've got the intro. Okay. Right, I, I haven't got it. So if everybody's ready, I'm gonna um I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna give a bit of an intro speech, and then we'll uh then then we'll, then we'll roll into it. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. Everybody. Yeah, sounds good. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. This is episode number 147, where we'll be watching and reacting live to qualifying from the Mexican Grand Prix. I'm your host, Tom Downey, from the Everything F1 team, and joining me today, we have Jawed of the Hit the Apex podcast. Howdy. And both Caitlin and Sham from the Get Checkered podcast. Hi, everyone. everyone. At the moment, we have three competitions running. If you subscribe to us on YouTube, leave a comment on the video, or give us a five-star review on iTunes, you'll be entered into a competition to win some free merch. And who doesn't love free merch? If you want to check out our merch, including mugs, T-shirts, hoodies, and everything else, head over to f1chronicle.com forward slash store. Finally, if you leave us a five-star review, we will give you a shout-out on the podcast. So please, please, please leave reviews. Let us know what you think. So we are heading into qualifying for the Mexican Grand Prix. It is currently roughly five minutes to go until we start. How are we feeling about it, Caitlin? Um, pretty excited. I just want to see what happens. I have high hopes for a certain someone, <clears throat> Checo. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm excited to see how it goes today. Lovely. And... Jawad, what do you think? What do you think we'll have from from this session? Who do you think is going to come out on top? Uh, it's really hard to pick. Like I look back to 2018, where we had that epic battle for pole between Ricardo and Verstappen at the time at Red Bull, um, and from FP3, it looks like Checo's got the pace to do it himself. Whether you know it comes out the other way, who knows? But I think we're going to have. We always have great qualifying's here, as long as everyone's not trying to form a train there in the stadium section and, you know, get a toe down the straight, I think we'll be fine. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's certainly going to be a good battle this weekend, I think. And finally, let's over to Caitlin's colleague, Shan. What are you expecting to oh, see yeah. from today? Oh. Um, I, I just saw, none of you can see this, but Tom put in our chat. Do you go by Shan? Yeah, 100%. The Shanika is normally, if I'm in trouble, um, I get the full <laughs> name. So yeah, um, I way. will be honest, I am totally flying by, blind into this weekend. I've just been so busy that I haven't been able to look up anything. I've only seen things here and there on Twitter of just, I, I guess, the surrounding the race. So the really fun outfits and what all the teams are doing, um, but not too much. But I am kind of with Caitlin. I, I want to see Checo take it just because of the energy. And I think after, what is it, like two years, we're still in the pandemic, but, you know, two years into this, to see like a giant crowd and people so excited, it would be nice to have them win. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, just just from my perspective, I, I am a big Verstappen fan. I'll make no secrets about it. But if Perez won today, I think Mexico will, will probably have a national hangover tomorrow. Um, yeah. <laughs> but 
just imagine, just imagine how good it would be to see Perez win only his what third race, or it would be his third win for his team at his home Grand Prix. Just imagine the absolute scenes if that did happen. So we are, well, we are rapidly approaching qualifying. Um, I mean, I'm currently looking at Verstappen putting on his gloves, and he's and he's he's got an absolute. He's got absolute eyes of steel at the moment while he's sitting in his car. Um, I think I'm a little ahead of you. I have um, I have Lewis at this point. Yeah. Well, funny enough, mine yeah. has just changed to Lewis. He's just walking out. He's just walking over to the car. With his hands device in his hand. And for any of our audio listeners, you will have a bit of this for this episode. I'm afraid because we are all watching our separate streams. We can't watch a single stream, mm-hmm. unfortunately, uh, due to copyright issues. There will be a little bit of gasping and holding breath throughout this podcast while some people see things while other people catch up. We've seen our first Mexican wave as well in the grandstands. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me we're going to have plenty of these today. <laughs> I think the crowd just seem giddy Ooh, no matter and- what. You know, they're probably just happy happy to be there. It's so good happy to, to see be there, the, honestly. Yeah. See the yeah. grandstands full again for F1 races. It is lovely to see a full crowd. Um, also, just uh, if if I can just check with my with my fellow F one fans here, um, where are you currently on the qualifying countdown clock on screen? If you even have one, mine is at mine ten is... seconds. Oh, I've oh. just seen the first car go out. Mine's yeah, mine just ended seconds. at zero. <laughs> So and I think I, Jordan and I have to go back like 10 seconds. Okay. There are there about there are there about, yeah. <laughs> but I've I've just seen um I've just seen the green light and we're on. Yeah. We are in Q1. So at the moment we have just the TV out on track. So whilst he's out, how do we think the TV is gonna do this weekend? Um Shan, any any thoughts on the Williams driver or just just, I know we're like resident Canadians, so we should have, but you should see Caitlin's face as soon as you mentioned it. Yeah, um, I'm you know sorry what? to bring it on. It's, uh, we're, we're glad that there are Canadians obviously in the sport, but man, Latifi, I, I hate to say this, but we've mentioned it in our podcast, Caitlin, he's kind of forgettable because of everything else that's happening. I just, I, I mean, just he has George he as a partner, right? He just gets overshadowed yeah. really easily. I just, I just hope there's no accidents. That's for Latifi. That's, that's all. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I can't really argue with that. Jared, how, how do you think Latifi's going to do today? Do you think he'll get out of Q1 or do you think he's going to be mixing in with the Haas? Um, if even if he does mix in with the houses, he will get a bit of a boost on the grid because you've got four guys taking grid penalties this weekend. So, you know, he just needs to keep it clean and he can start, you know, inside the top 15 or whatever. So I'm not sure what Williams's pace has been this weekend. All I heard was Russell had a bit of gearbox problems um, on Friday. So I'm, I'm a bit like Shan. I haven't had a chance to keep up to date with the weekend with so much other stuff going on, but yeah. I think um, one of the free practices, it was pretty embarrassing. It was like the two Canadians in like 18, 19. <laughs> and then it was Mazepin afterwards. So love that. I'd love that for them. <laughs> well, actually, Stroll is, yeah, Stroll is taking a grid penalty this weekend. So yeah, he will yeah. already be at the back of the grid. Yeah. Who who is it doing the um, engine penalties this week? Stroll. Um, so I saw got, Lando. Yeah, Lando, Ocon, and Sonoda. Oh, okay. So at the moment on track, we currently have both the Haas drivers of Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin, the aforementioned Nicholas Latifi, and F one's resident ice man and ice cream eater Kimi Raikkonen. Mm. <laughs> I had to put that in there. Ice cream. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely the wrong season in the UK oh. for that. It's about four degrees outside and hammering yeah, down with Canada. rain. Yeah, yeah. Canada's uh it's getting cold real fast. <laughs> yep. Oh yes. Right, so here we go. Reckon and off on a flying lap. How do we think the Alfa Romeos will get on this weekend? Do, do you think they'll get out of Q1 on merit? I am obviously obviously they have engine penalties behind them. 
But do you think yeah. Jimmy will put in a representative time? I hope so. I think they'll get into Q2. I think so too. Yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, Kimmy is currently purple in sector one. But that might be because he's the only car <laughs> on a fast line. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. He's the only one out there. <laughs> but it's a good yeah. record to hold, even just for a little bit. A little bit. E- exactly, yeah. yeah. It helps the confidence, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, there, Not that Kimi needs help with confidence. Uh, no, I, I think to be fair to Kimi, he is just winding down for the last few races of the season, isn't he? Mm-hmm. It is going to be kind of weird not having him there next year. You know, you, you, I know he took that break in between um, for a couple of seasons, but it's just felt like he's been here the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah, because Kimi joined F1 in, what, 2001, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. And, yeah, and I, I was six years old when Kimi joined F1. <laughs> yeah, and I am now 26, rapidly approaching 27, so. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, I would have been six as well then. Yeah, I, well, I, I always remember being very young, seeing Kimi, racing with Schumacher. I remember watching it with my grandma in her house in about 2004. So to still see him on the grid now, it's just a... Uh, That's brilliant. Yeah. So just uh, just just going back to qualifying a moment, we currently have everybody but George Russell, Max Verstappen, and both the Mercedes drivers. Everybody yeah. is currently out. out. And at the moment, Kimi Raikkonen has set the fastest time of a 1.19.1. Uh, who is behind him? It is Mr. Schumacher, Schumacher. who is mm-hmm. 2.4 seconds behind him. And then, unsurprisingly, Mazepin is another 3.3, say 3.6, I think, behind that. 3.16? Was it 3.1? Oh, my my apologies. Mix, mix time deleted. Is that due to track oh. limits, do we think? Must be. It's just dropped off the timing screen. Oh, yeah. Okay, and now we have home home hero Perez ramping up for a fast lap. I'm going to turn the volume up just so I can hear it a bit because I'd imagine there'll be a huge cheer as he comes through the stadium section. I know, I hope. Sergio, come on. You know what? Um, every year I'm just going to like, I'm going to do a Mexico vacation and then I'm going to go to Mexico city. Just perfect timing for us here in Canada. Started snowing <laughs> when I was down there and I'll just go there and watch this and like be part of the whole Checo parade. And I would love it. That'd be great. I, I, I would love to be there. Yeah. I, 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 th- I think aside from the Tafosi in, in Monza and the, um, and the, the Dutch army of Zandvoort and Belgium, I think this Mexico crowd has to be one of the best. Mm. Yeah. And like, so let's consider the timing of this Mexico GP. Like they, ha- it was um, Day of the Dead just a few days ago. So like just yeah. Mexican spirit is like huge right now, right? Yeah. And then you have this, like the lone Mexican in F1 just killing it in the game, hopefully can come out on top. And I think this year especially would be fantastic to see in person. Ooh, what's... Oh. Mm. Okay, so ooh, we have a yellow flag in sector three. Yeah, we do. Sectors one and three. Red flag, red, red flag. flag. Who is that? Oh, Stroll. that is Lance Stroll. We have a red flag in Q1. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Caitlin, we didn't talk about good things for oh, the dear. other Canadian. <laughs> so oh, so Lance Stroll looks like he's definitely come a cropper coming out of the final that, turn. But, yeah. Oh, okay. Lance Rod is reporting he's okay, which is which is That's first and foremost the most important yeah. thing. Yeah. Let's just it's... wait to see a replay. Um, Does there look like there's much damage to the barrier as oh, well? No. I can see I... the out of place a little bit. People running over the, to him. The barrier doesn't look that damaged, thankfully. Okay. Um, so they'll probably just have to sweep sweep the runoff, yeah. and we should be able to get going soon. Yeah, hopefully this isn't going to be a big clean-up operation. However, yeah. looking at the front left of that Aston Martin, 
there is quite a lot of damage to that suspension. So I'd imagine this is oh, Lance. Wow. Uh, yes. I would yeah, imagine that's... I would I would imagine this is Lance Stroll's qualifying over, especially with the engine mm-hmm. penalty. Mm-hmm. Plus the Aston but... Martin mechanic's gonna be very busy this evening. Or well, let's hope he didn't damage uh... anything on the rear of the car. Like if the internals mm-hmm. got hit, that's okay. a new power unit yeah. he's <laughs> hurt. Oh, he just... it'll... sorry, bad. Joe. It's... He has just got on the white curb as he's come around the final bend, Ooh. and he is. You can see he is just fighting the car all the way around. Yeah. That to me is quite reminiscent of Valtteri Bottas in 2019 when he shunted into the barrier and lost it there. So, as we have two Canadians yeah, on the show, um, <laughs> Kate... yes, Caitlin, I can I can see you grimacing. <laughs> Thoughts on on this accident? Uh, it's like exactly what you don't want to do. You're going to take an engine penalty anyway. So why are you going to ruin the car? <laughs> <laughs> why? Just no sympathy. For <laughs> That's why. Like okay. in the past previous races, some of the drivers knew they were going to take an engine penalty, made it safely out of Q1, um, but then they didn't race in Q2. Right? They don't want to risk damage to the car. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And then just to just to maybe balance that thought a tad, let's go to Jawad. Just what did you think? <laughs> what well, viewpoint on that accident? Well, I was gonna ask everyone's thoughts whether you reckon it's gonna be a pit lane start now for him. Like why risk starting from the back of the grid and they what if they have to change a gearbox too? But that um it's hasn't it been very dusty on that final corner too, just very low grip I think um, that's all what weekend. Saying. Yeah, yeah, especially because so, like there was the two crashes on that turn in free practice. Yeah, so no, it's just wrong place at the wrong time. Looks like it, and as Tom said, he was fighting the. Is rear he being of the car. taken away in the medical car? It does appear. It does, it does appear as if he is yeah. being taken to the medical center, probably just for precautionary checks. As I'd imagine, yeah. there was a fairly high impact. Mm. Let's see if I can. Is there any other information? I know. I will we, check Twitter. Yeah, we don't have any other information at the moment. We we mm. do know he is out of the car safe and sound, and he walked the medical car under under his own steam. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that he will. I would imagine he'll be going to the um to the medical yeah. center just to just just to make sure just he's okay. Check. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it. Just That's what I'm seeing the, on Twitter too. It just looked like yeah, he put the power down just and the just power the rear just... end went away yeah yeah so um just picking up on what you said then Jared, about it possibly being a pit lane start that is a really good point and as soon as i saw the rear of the car go into the wall my first thought was i would i'd imagine they'll probably swap everything out whether needed or not um yeah. shan what do you think after seeing that do you think um do you think aston martin will just strip everything out, new gearbox, complete new engine, and starting from the pit lane. I, I think so. Like it's, I mean, obviously it's hard to tell from where we are, but th- that looks like significant damage. And at this point, it's like m- might as well, right? Exactly. I don't know if you all are all seeing the barrier, but I mean, the point of a barrier is that it's supposed to take the brunt of it, but it's still. Yeah, uh, not that good. that is a good point about the barrier. I did just see it just just that, just as I asked you the question. There was definitely a huge chunk taken out of it there, so it's uh, yeah. it's certainly done its job. It's fair to say, and I'm sure everybody would agree we are thankful for the safety measures in place in F1. That what looked to be a fairly nasty impact, Shaw was able to walk away from somewhat unscathed. Yeah, he is just he has just lost it. Then, for the benefit of our audio listeners. Um, at the moment, we are just watching replays of Lance Stroll losing it in, in the final turn. Um, we are currently waiting for the session to be restarted. We don't have an indication as to when it will be restarted. They are currently cleaning the track. They're currently sweeping the carbon and the leftover bits of barrier, and they're making repairs to the barrier. Once we know when the session will be restarted, we will obviously mention Mm-hmm. So this is probably a good chance just just to have a chat about the about the battle between Ferrari and McLaren because obviously those teams are so so tightly fought this year and it could be a case that one slight error could could give one team third in the championship over the other. Um, 
let's let's go to you, Caitlin. Who do you think is going to come out on top this weekend between the two teams? Um, based on the weekend so far, I would say probably Ferrari. It doesn't seem like McLaren's having a hot weekend, but I think that it'll stay close for the rest of the season. I have no idea who to call to come out between the two of them. It'll be close, but I don't think it's going to end it this season either. Um. Well, so, so do, do you think moving into the new regulations, we're going to continue to see very, very tight battle between two titans of F1 then? I kind of hope so, yeah. And they got like they got four really good guys um, that I personally, like I just like them as people too. So it's fun to see them all racing. The last race, was it the American GP where they were like, all four <laughs> of them were at each other pretty much for a little bit? That was yeah. great to see. Yeah. Three wide, right? The three yeah, wide I love that. One of them ahead. That was so scary. <laughs> I was like, please yeah. don't, please don't. <laughs> can't do an accident. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> there was a point in that race when, when you saw, I'm sure it was Lando trying to overtake possibly Danny Rick. And I think it was Signs, and he tried to go up the inside. Mm-hmm. And he overcooked on the brakes. I was thinking, oh my Lord, we're going to go from three cars to no cars all, all at once. <laughs> yeah. Just, um, just again, for the benefit of our audio listeners, we are currently seeing, of all people, Michael Massey, the FIA race director, mucking in and helping fix the barriers, it looks like. <laughs> he, he's Either that or he's just being Michael Sassy, as I like to call him. With Sassy everyone. Massey. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I wonder what he is doing. To be fair, he, he, he is probably inspecting the barriers to make sure that it is up to standard before we resume the session. Yeah. There. That's uh, that's that's certainly what I'm thinking. It, it does appear as if Mr. Massey was doing a check over of the barrier. It was just odd yeah, to see him. Have, with... Sorry, Shango. They have, like giant barrier pieces in like. Do you see that flatbed? That yeah. Amazing. That they've hauled out there. It was oh. it was a bit of a surprise to see Michael Massey with a piece of advertising cardboard in his hand, though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We saw the Aston Martin pit wall on there. And I want to ask you guys a question. Do you think Lance Stroll is trying really hard at the end of the season to try and match the pace of Sebastian? Like I know back and forth, like when they've been in the bottom 10, I can't even recall how many times each one's been in front, but I feel like Sebastian's first year with Aston Martin and he's really put on a good show for them. Um, He's, he podiumed, um, and then it's like Stroll hasn't done that yet. So is he trying to put on a big show? Uh, that is a very good question. Certainly from my perspective, I did feel like Stroll, certainly looking at that accident, was almost overdriving the car coming out of that turn. And he, he did seem to be somewhat fighting at the steering wheel, I would say. If it's that he's perhaps trying to trying to sort of match Vettel, I wouldn't be surprised if that is going on in his head, especially obviously with the influence of Stroll Senior having an input yeah. in the team and obviously with what, what people say on social media about him. Um, but that's certainly my viewpoint. What what do you think about that, Shan? Do you, do you think uh, do you think Stroll was perhaps overdoing it a bit then? I think what's interesting is that with him and Esteban, they're obviously from totally different backgrounds, right? And how they were raised, but they both have what you kind of alluded to, which is a bit of a chip on their shoulder and how they just both don't really fit in that much when it comes to the other drivers. Also like that camaraderie element doesn't seem to be there for them. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I think Lance Stroll has a lot to prove, right? At the end of the day, everyone knows i mean i think we could talk about formula one to the end of time about paid seats and how frustrating it is <laughs> but <laughs> his dad is a billionaire and we all know that that seat will be his until his dad probably is like i don't want to be in formula one anymore so if i was him i would definitely have a complex about it for sure absolutely um and then jared what you know just following on from the points that have already been made yeah, I pretty much agree with all of you. And also all season I've kind of been harping on about how just Aston Martin, the car itself is quite woeful this season. And, you know, they kicked up such a fuss at the start of the year about the um, tweak in the regulations for this year. But, you know, they haven't gone on to then adapt to it as Mercedes have. You know, it was them and Mercedes that kind of lost out with the the switch 
and you know we see Mercedes back up to you know the pace they were close to last season or whatever so yeah you know I feel like Stroll has been very anonymous this year we haven't really seen even moments like this from him a lot you know it's just kind of he's he, he blink and you'll miss him kind of thing so the fact that he is trying to overdrive the car you yeah, maybe he wants to get more performance out of it and whatnot but yeah you know it's almost like guys we could just take it easy and wait till next year now when we have a whole <laughs> new car under our belt yeah so you've raised very good point jared about um about the Aston Martins, perhaps not adapting to the uh, to the change of regulations as well as Mercedes. I do wonder if there's perhaps a chain of thought with the Aston Martins, and I'd be interested to get all three of your opinions on this. Um, I wonder if Aston Martin have perhaps held back on the development of the car and saved some resources for next year. And the only reason that Mercedes have developed the car so much is because Red Bull are so close in the title fight this year. What um that's what do you think a really about that, good Shan? Perspective. Yeah, that's a really good perspective. I didn't even think about that. And it maybe it, you know, is smarter in the long run for Aston Martin if they want to move out of just where they are right now. But I just I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, and obviously the um the Aston Martin or racing point as they were known last year, obviously certainly had more than a hint of influence of the 29 Mercedes about them, which is obviously the topic of a lot of controversy last year, so the um, so, so the rule changes were were obviously going to affect them a fair amount. Just while we are still in the red flag, and at the moment we have no updates on when the session will resume, um, I'd just like to go to our chat quickly. So we have some people in the chat. First of all, we have the resident Formula One Grid Talk super fan, Mr. Connor Walker. Hi, Connor. Has- <laughs> <laughs> and first of all, Connor has said. Fellow Canadians, so Jared, I think uh, I think you and I are outnumbered this week by, oh, no. by Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um so one point. Uh, sorry, one thing that Connor has said. He has said, "Have we already done top five predictions? We have not." And I think, mm-hmm. given we have a bit of a break in play, should we run through some predictions now? Mm-hmm. Okay, lovely. <laughs> so I will go to you, Jared. First, give me your top five predictions for qualifying. Okay, <laughs> put on the spot there. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go out on a limb and say Checo and Max one two will go Hamilton third. I'm gonna say Gasly fourth. Ooh. Um, and Bottas will be fifth fastest. Okay, Caitlin, <laughs> what do you think? Um, I kind of want to do like a a very like half like very feasible outcome half just like <laughs> a preferred outcome what i would love to see <laughs> so for this one honestly check on one um i think uh, like let's put bodas in two oh, um girl, and then max language right now and then lewis <laughs> and then Yuki ended up six in FP3. So everyone talks about how great Pierre is, and he is. He really is. But, like, I don't know. Can Yuki yeah. pull something off? That'd be great. That, that would be quite a turnout for the book if that was the <laughs> right? top five. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and last but by no means least, Shan, what, what are your thoughts yeah, on the, uh, your predictions? I was Something sort of similar to Caitlin. I would love to see Valtteri just get more podiums in general. So for sure, I wanted to check a win today. It would be so dope. Then Valtteri at number two. I mean, I I love Lewis. So Lewis in third. I think realistically, Max would probably be in fourth in my unrealistic top five. Um, And then in fifth, I'm also throwing in a wild wild card. Uh, Let's say like maybe Sebastian Vettel. Could he bring something home? It would be nice to see him somewhere. <laughs> so, like, Aston Martin starts off really bad, but they would end up really good. <laughs> exactly. There are stranger uh, things that have happened. I like it. <laughs> that, would, that would certainly be quite the turnout for the books this weekend if uh, if uh, <laughs> if Vettel ended up qualifying P5. But I wouldn't, you, it, I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't put it past yeah. him. Um, my predictions. I'm going to go. I think Max will get pole. 
he is just he is on another level. Um, and I'm going to go all out, and I'm going to say a Red Bull one two in qualifying. And I think we'll then have Lewis P three. I'm going to say Leclerc P four and Bottas P five. Nice thing. That's that's how Very I cool. that, that's that's how Yours I think it would happen. Like- the most realistic to be honest <laughs> yeah I, I, no I mean, wild cards <laughs> very down to earth yeah. okay um just a quick update from race control it says a five minute warning will be given before q1 resumes so just to confirm that that is i'm not saying that five minutes from now i'm saying that at some point in the future very helpful i know we will have a five yeah. minute warning of q1 resuming so at the moment, we don't we don't we don't have a set time for Q1 resuming. Um, there will be a, a lot of us uh, sitting around talking, uh, questioning, Such and exactly yeah. So at the moment on screen, I can certainly see the barriers appear to be almost repaired. We currently have a forklift, which resembles last year's Ferrari on the main straight. Um, and now I've got someone in a natural Libre mask. I was not expecting that. Um, but the barrier certainly appears to be repaired. And I just looked at the I chat. Just give a, sorry, a tiny oh, shout out to one of our listeners on Twitter. Her name, her handle is at Nicole713. She's actually at the race right now. So she's got like a fun little play by play going. And it's, it's like, chaotic and just super fun so if you are looking for something <laughs> to read <laughs> while uh we wait for things to start again quali um you can go check her out on twitter <laughs> so I, I would i would love to be there this weekend i bet the atmosphere as we've talked about would just be absolutely insane oh just i'm um, just looking back to our chat at the moment uh for a moment connor walker said i think we could get a sneaky ferrari in the top five connor i love the way you think and i Given, given especially that Lando has an engine penalty this weekend, I think we could absolutely see a Ferrari in the top five. Now, which Ferrari it is, I don't know, because they are so close this year. Mm. So neck and neck. Yeah. Do, I, do you reckon... I, yeah. Oh, sorry, all, all I was going to say was, I do like Carlos Sainz. I've always rated him as a driver, so I would like to put him there. But I think Leclerc is the stronger qualifier of the two. And Joe, you would you were just going to yeah, say? Yeah. Do you reckon they'll um, try using the toe then in Q three to see who can get um, as far up as they can? I do think we are going to certainly see some form of toe this weekend. Um, and this is a point actually that I that I was going to bring up at some point, and now seems like a really good time to talk about it. So Mexico has that very very long straight. To me, is quite reminiscent of the straight in Russia minus the sort of slight kink that makes up turn one at the Sochi Autodrome. Caitlin, do you think that whoever starts on pole today, or, well, qualifies on pole today, starts tomorrow, might almost be at a bit of a disadvantage because they'll be giving such a slip soon to the cars behind them? Um, I think that depends on who's pole. Right. I think if, if Max <laughs> is on pole, it, regardless what happens, he might lose positions to second or something. But I think Max is, like you said earlier, like he's on another level. This year, I think, is his year. So could Max make it up? Probably. If, say, Checo is on pole and Max is behind him, maybe. Just maybe he loses that. Just imagine though, if uh, if we had Max P one and Lewis P three, and Max gave a slipstream to Lewis, I think we'd have absolute carnage going into turn one. Myself, um, uh, that could be that could be interesting. It was certainly it was certainly made for good TV, and Netflix would be all over it. So, <laughs> do you think they've done that? We don't like Shanika and I don't think they've done the Red Bull side yet because they were doing a different team for each race. They said for this upcoming season. I would be shocked if they were not following Paris this weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yep. That's a good point. Haven't yeah. they already said that they're not following Max or Max will not? Yeah, Max. Uh, yeah, because it came out that Max doesn't want to be on there. Um, and it only came out last week. So I'm like, maybe they haven't done the Red Bull side yet. Possibly. But also, it's going to be like interesting how they're, how do you, what? <laughs> just, I think it's just so, he's so unavoidable because of where he's positioned in the ship, like in, sorry, not in the show, but in, 
where we are right now in the series. So it's just really like, I, I just, he's going to be talked about regardless, I guess is like my yeah. thing. So I'm curious to see how Netflix tries to work around it. Cause it might just be like, he physically won't appear in it or has he gone far farther and said like, just like, don't even mention me. Like, I don't know. Absolutely. Uh, just, just to intervene, um, we have had a message from Race Control. Session will resume in five minutes time. That is 2.33 p.m. local time. So obviously adjust for wherever you are. For me, that is 25 to 9 on, on a Saturday night. And it is, I can feel my bedtime rapidly approaching. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so let's, let's talk just, uh, just for a few minutes whilst, whilst we wait for quality to resume. Um, Jared, what are your thoughts on what Shah mentioned about um, about Max not wanting to take part in Drive to Survive this year? Can Can you blame him given the uh, given how they over dramatize things and well, pressure? yeah, the dramatized, but also possibly it might be a, a mental thing as well. Like with mm-hmm. such a important um, moment in his life that could possibly be coming uh winning the world championship this year he wants to be focused 110 percent and not have distractions outside of um what he has to do in the car possibly like he's got enough with you know the press conferences and what lewis says or uh, you know and they had that war of words about and he said things like oh i don't care about you know what he thinks and all that sort of thing so maybe it's just one of those things he doesn't want that um extra distraction with him he wants to be fully focused on winning the championship i don't think because he did he did like, the interviews for netflix last year so you know i think this year it's probably just a focus thing he wants to not make sure he's not distracted by what's going on with their little narrative in the uh, world of Netflix. I just realized we lost Caitlin. <laughs> oh, yes. no. Yeah, we appear to have had... <laughs> I know the internet at her house is actually not that great either, so I just texted her, but she'll find her way. Yeah. So we are currently two minutes, 30 seconds away from qualifying resuming. There's a, yeah, we're just, uh, we're currently just having some panoramic views over the paddock, really. What's um, Kimi under investigation for? Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder. Oh, it says red flag incident involving car seven Raikkonen investigated after the session. I wonder if that's going to be not slowing or perhaps not taking action or something. So at the moment, we have queuing up to exit the pit lane, we have both of the Alfa Romeo uh, pardon me, we have both of the Alfa Tauri drivers and also that look like both of the Haas drivers. So expect to see a fair bit of action when we leave the pit lane in roughly a minute and a half's time. Yeah, Gasly having a nice stretch there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Pierre, Gasly, uh, Pierre Gasly looks rather relaxed in that car, I'd say, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yes, just, just just the way he's 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 got his feet up, just uh just relaxing. <laughs> okay, here's a replay of uh Kimmy. Oh, okay. What the, are you yeah, all awesome. watching with like um closed captioning on? I'm not no. because my provider doesn't allow for it. Oh mine okay. doesn't it's either, I think. Perfect they're talking about i don't know if this is like if it's catching the right things or not but their coffee was mentioned at some point i'm like is this real is this right like i don't know if it's um if it's the sky sports commentary it is quite possible that that uh, david croft and martin brumble are talking absolute nonsense yeah He hasn't. He hasn't mentioned darts yet, has Crofty? Because I'm sure he'll be getting ready to plug his uh, darts championship at the end of the year Probably that he does commentary at, for. <laughs> we're at 48 seconds on mine, at least. I think I'm. I'm at 30 seconds on mine. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm at last. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, I will have a deeply delayed reaction time. It's not even like a two second. It's like 15 seconds off of you. 
So I'm at 10 seconds. Yeah, green green flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we have uh, we have pretty much everybody queuing up to go out by the looks of it. Okay, so the Haas and the Williams are side by side, even at the pit lane. Mm-hmm. Perhaps they're getting a bit of practice in for tomorrow. And which Mercedes is that now behind the Ferrari? Uh, I think it was Valtteri Bottas. Hey! Surprise! Hey. <laughs> Unless, and again, for the benefit of our audio listeners, Caitlin had a just a brief technical difficulty, but she is back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's okay. I would call it a random restart, but it was probably one of those things where, like, months ago, I said, yeah, this state is fine to restart. And then your <laughs> laptop was like, today, right oh, now, yeah. is the time. <laughs> exactly. Over. Oh, we have Time's a Ferrari going, going extremely slowly. I'm it's just going to turn my volume signs. up a little. Please don't be signs. Oh, it's slowly. It's, it's signs catching. Carla Signs is reporting no power. He is currently in neutral. Oh well, God. there goes the idea of a slipstream in Q3. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carlos Science has done something. He is back. It looks oh, like he's. It looks like he's done what Caitlin's machine did. He turned it off and back on again, and it's working <laughs> fine. Control alt delete. <laughs> delete. Yeah. <laughs> and I say that as someone who is paid to do it for a living. So. <laughs> okay. So. Q1, we are currently we currently have nine minutes left and we have everybody on track apart from Lance Stroll for obvious reasons, Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon. Everybody else is currently out on track and Leclerc is currently quickest. I can't see what that time he's done because the time screen just shows outlap, but I believe he did a 117 something. 991. Thank you, Jared. That was Please. perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> just, look, just looking back to our chat for a moment as well. So the so Connor Walker has, practice in Mexico has, City. <laughs> so <laughs> so Connor Walker has commented. Not only does Lando have the penalty, but I feel he's fallen off a little bit recently. Doesn't seem like he's nearly as close I, to those top three five performances he had early in the year. I I agree with him. Um, I think ever since the. Just after the summer break, um, I think after Russia, after, after he had that so nearly win, which slipped away from him, uh, he just hasn't quite been on it. And Danny Rick has definitely picked up a lot this season. What do you think about that, Jared? Yeah, look, I sadly feel the same way. And it, it, it makes me really sad too, because he was so good up until then. And I hope that the defeat in Russia hasn't messed with him too much, you know, that, you know, he felt obviously visibly and all of it dejected after it and, and distraught. But, you know, as a racing driver, you've got to bounce back from um, low points such as that, you know, and it's such an important fight between McLaren and Ferrari, as you guys were saying in the championship this year. So, you know, the things we were saying about Danny Rick earlier in the season that he's got to um, pick up his pace so that they can get better results. You know, are we going to have to say that about Lando now for the rest of the season? You know, I hope I hope not. But, yeah, yeah let's hope he can pick it up for the last couple of races. Absolutely. I will, I will he's got many to... wins to come, I reckon, in his career. So Oh, oh definitely. I will come back to that point in, in a moment. However, Valtteri Bottas has gone quickest with a 117.5. But Sergio Perez has just gone quickest with a 117.4. But Max Verstappen is currently about to cross the line. And he goes quickest with a 116.7 from Max Verstappen. He is six tenths ahead of Perez. Oh, wow. That is a statement of intent from from Max Verstappen. Lewis Hamilton doesn't look like he's had possibly the cleanest of laps. We're just seeing a replay of him hitting the curb a little bit. But my oh, he's had a big lock up into the stadium section as well. Has has Hamilton? 
But my oh my, that was a mighty lap from Verstappen. Mm-hmm. If he does that in Q3, he will be hard to beat. Is he? It's um six hundreds faster than Perez in second. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, he is. He is six tenths quicker than Perez. Six tenths. Sorry, I should know decimal places. That's fun. So, at, so at the moment we have. Max Verstappen, P1, with a 116.7, followed by his teammate Sergio Perez, who was six-tenths slower. Then Valtteri Bottas, P3, who is seven-tenths slower. Lando Norris was was also seven-tenths slower. And then Lewis Hamilton in fifth was 0.78 seconds behind Max Verstappen. So the top five are fair. Well, the top four minus Verstappen are very close. But that was an absolute yeah. monster of a lap from Verstappen. Mm. Sam, what are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that lap from 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 Max? Is, do you think that's a real sort of laying down the gauntlet for this for this session? Well, yeah, this is like, I mean, it's, at this point we know where momentum's going, right? So this is his to lose essentially. So I think he's showing up the way that he needs to, and Lewis needs to just pull it together because. If this continues, we know how hard. Okay, I actually have a question for both of you. Why is it so difficult to get past a McLaren? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good question. Because <laughs> we hear about it all the time, right, Caitlin? That they're like, yeah, it's not, you know, there's the meme of it on Twitter where it's like seven times bigger than all the other cars. <laughs> but it's just like, I, I mean, you know, we just don't want Lewis to end up behind a McLaren, which I don't think will happen, but he just needs to clean it up a little bit so just just to interject Valtteri Bottas has gone for another flying lap Mm -hmm. and he is the second driver to go into the 116s and Lewis Hamilton has just followed him but Lewis Hamilton is is only third he did a 117.2 and Bottas uh, Bottas is only one point is only 0.1 seconds behind Max Verstappen did he have to use another set of Soft tires for that. Yeah. I I believe the Mercedes have had to use two sets of tires there. Mm. I believe I'm not sure. I, I I can't confirm that. But well, and and at well, the moment we have Esteban Ocon just coming through the stadium section. Currently currently green in a, in both in both sectors. And Ocon crosses the line to go P10. They've left it la- rather late to set their flying laps, even though I, Ocon will get the grid penalty, but for yeah. Alonso. So, yeah. Alonso is only P13. Uh, Caitlin, what do you think Ocon's chances of... Uh, sorry, uh, uh, what do you think Alonso's chances uh, are of getting out of Q1? Because he's going to have to go and refuel, I did. possibly new tyres. There's no time, I think... So. I do think he should be fine. Um, look who's in the bottom five right now. It's two Williams, unless George pulls off something, and then yeah, maybe Alonso could be up. But um, your two Haas, Lance Stroll, and the two Williams. So I think most other teams should be fine. If to get into George, Q2. if George gets out, then it's Science who drops well, out. Science is really at risk. Has yeah. he done his yeah. yet? Uh, um, I, I think this is when you were. Oh, were you here, Caitlin, when he was driving like? A kilometer an hour possibly Taylor I believe you may have dropped out at that point um yeah. signs when, when he left the pit he did appear to have an electrical issue um yeah he he was he was going pretty slowly when he was coming out of the pit lane it looked like he was stuck with the pit limiter wrong um however he did manage to reset it I don't know if he's set another fastest lap it does look like he is currently on a warm-up lap Mom, at the moment it, yeah, it, it it would be nice to see Carlos right back up at the top, I think. Yeah. And then otherwise you've got Seb um also kind of at risk as well mm-hmm. there in fourteenth and Fernando in thirteenth. So two I Formula have signs just starting a flying lap right now on my feed. Same so for I think me, yeah. I think he'll move out of fifteenth. I think he'll be fine. Absolutely. Plus the track will be rubbering in as well. So we should, we should expect to see cars get get a fair bit wow. quicker. Well, I say a fair bit quicker. It would be nice. I think we are 
especially you guys get a bit quicker. My number five prediction, Sebastian Vettel, is uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? There's no. still two more sessions to go, Shani. <laughs> this is the warm up. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's safe to say that's that's very quickly turning into a bold prediction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at the moment we have out on track. We have both the Mercedes, Sergio Perez, Charles Leclerc, then everybody from Pierre Gasly down to George Russell. Obviously, Lance Stroll is not out on track because he is, as far as we understand, he is still in the medical center being assessed after his accident. Interesting to see Daniel Ricciardo has not gone back out and he is only P7. And no. given that uh, given that Sebastian Vettel, who is in P14, is only, what, 0.8 of a second behind him. Yeah. That's a, Here comes Carlos. Come on, Carlos! Okay, so those are much better, that from Carlos Sainz. Fifth. Back up to P5. Now, Nikita Mazepin about to cross the line for anybody who's listening. And the and it's already gone from him. So, to Mazepin's credit, he has gone P17. He's ahead of Latifi. He's ahead of both the Williams. Yeah, what's... Uh, oh, what's Latifi, Latifi has just gone P16. Yeah, cool. Pierre Gasly. I'm just going to hold because I want to see your faces when he crosses the line. I'm just waiting. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. <laughs> Who are we okay. waiting on? George? Uh, we're Probably waiting on me. Gasly and Leclerc at the moment. You're going to want to see. And, and yeah. Mr. Oh, Russell. Shit. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that one's fair. So we have just seen Leclerc set the fastest time of 116.7. Here comes. We've seen Gasly go third. And Valtteri Bottas has just gone quickest with a 116.7. There's so much stuff happening right now. Lap times are yeah. tumbling. Yeah. And Gasly oh, put it, Gasly yeah, put it P3, which, which then got bumped down to P4 as Bottas went quickest. That's still, wow. good. That's still good. And <laughs> the, the, big, yeah. the, the big shock, Fernando Alonso knocked out in Q1. Yeah, like, Damn. why didn't they go out earlier to set a um, banker time? They left it yeah. really late for, yeah, they did. for Alonso. Yeah. Is there any, like, strategy reason why they would do something like that? I can't think of anything. Do you guys know, like, in past experience? No. There's, there's nothing that immediately springs to mind. Um, so your eliminations from Q1, we have Fernando Alonso P16. That is a yeah. big surprise. Big, big surprise. And then Latifi, P17. He did put in a much improved lap, but unfortunately it was not to be. We then have the Haas pairing of Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. And finally, unable to finish the session, was Lance Stroll. So this leaves us with roughly, what, five, ten minutes until we roll into Q2. Um, let's go to Caitlin. What were your thoughts on that on that qualifying session? Safe to say that was that was quite hectic. It, it, it kind of got hectic, like, <coughs> sorry, kind of pretty pretty fast. <laughs> it was fun to watch. I'm, I definitely was, like, a few seconds faster than you guys. So I'm seeing everyone, like, get faster times, faster times. So I'm just like, what? Um, yeah, did not see Fernando Alonso doing that. He didn't have a good race at U.S. because he crashed out, right? He didn't finish. I don't know if he crashed out. He didn't finish, though. I remember because um, he read but, the bar. Oh, yeah. there's a big Alonso fan. Yeah, mad. but both, both Alpines retired with mechanical issues yeah. possibly related to the rear wing. Yeah, so it's not not been a good few races. You, we'll see what he can pull off tomorrow. But um, George, very good. Um, other than that, it's like I didn't see much surprise. Just very happy to see <coughs> Charles coming back up to the top. Yeah, that was well, like not landing on top, but <laughs> yeah, that that was quite the session. Uh, what what did you think, Shan? What, what what were your what were your thoughts on that rather exciting? Uh, uh, I was going to say FP one. Just... I mean Q one. <laughs> I'm glad that Carlos was able to bring it back a little bit there because that would have sucked to see him out. But yeah, I, I'm curious. I mean, obviously they're not going to tell us. Like we're just 
for podcasters, but why Alpine waited so long. And then other than that, Pierre, Caitlin knows, or if you've listened to her podcast, I have a crush on him. So I'm excited to see him do well at any point. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then Jared, um, obviously big surprise seeing Alonso go out in Q1. I feel like I've mentioned that too many times now, but that 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 is the big talking point from, from the session, I think it's fair to say. But let's not gloss over George Russell and both of the Alfa Romeos into Q2. On yeah, we were, we were right on the Alfa Romeo prediction at least, so that, that's a tick in the box. But like with Alpine, why, considering Ocon's got a penalty, they should have sent Alonso out first, and now you know they're both going to yeah. start from the back of the grid effectively. So they've shot themselves in the foot there. Yeah, that was a uh, that was definitely not the best strategic move from um from, from from Alpine. I was surprised to see that they hadn't headed out after after the red flag. I was very surprised to not see them hmm. into uh you know you know going going straight out with pretty much everybody else. But I'm I'm not an F1 strategist. I'm just <laughs> I'm just someone who, I'm just someone who who, who watches it. That's funny. Are you guys getting that um, car performance scores on the bottom of your screen? Uh, I definitely them, have a Toyo Tires moment. ad. So <laughs> we've got a Lance Stroll uh, interview. interview. Yeah. Sky, yeah. Okay, so um, pretty much they were saying Pierre Gasly had the best car performance score. Um, is this so, uh, is this the ever reliable AWS graphic? See, 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 that exact one. <laughs> 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 So let's uh, let's 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 take that with a pinch of salt, shall we? Okay, but it's like with Pierre on top, we should just mention it because it's exciting news. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. for for me as a very 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 big Pierre Gasly fan, seeing him rocky that car up to P three was a, uh, and then finish the session P four. I've got got high hopes for uh, for the rest of the session. See, it was the it was the um the. Stretching he was doing in the car before going I out that, that made all the difference, yeah. you know. <laughs> he was him up a little bit. He was definitely getting himself in the zone. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think he was sitting there doing just a little bit of meditation, visualizing the track in his mind, just uh, just just getting himself ready. Whilst we wait for Q two, um, let's have a let's have a quick discussion because that reminds me of myself. Um, who is your driver of the season so far? Outside of Hamilton and Verstappen, let's go to you first, Shan. Ah, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have to think about that one. Uh, honestly, probably okay, not because of the crash, but I, I do think Pierre has done just a lot in the Alpha Tori and has pulled a lot of performance out of the car, so he's been impressive. And then I would say, like, Carlos Sainz, too. The fact that I mean. You can say Charles has had maybe not the best luck with some of the issues with this car, but he's so close to Charles. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I think he doesn't get highlighted very much for his talent. So I would say those two. And also it was nice to see, sorry, you asked me for one person as I give you 10. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's been really cool to watch Fernando Alonso just be back in it. So when he is on, like, performing really well, it's like, oh, God, you can just see the greatness, I suppose. <laughs> what about you, Kayleen? Who's your driver of the season outside of the title contenders? Um, I think I definitely started thinking Landel because he was doing so well. Um, I hope he can kind of pull something else back, but I still think it's been an amazing season for him. And then, of course, George Russell just being... It's a very good Amazing point. in the Williams. Yeah. And then very quickly, as Q2 has started, Jared. Yeah, I'll probably with- say Lando, despite all the things that have happened recently. But you know, Carlos Science as well has been excellent. So yeah, one of one of the two. Absolutely. And from 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 myself, it's a tie between Lando Norris and Pierre Gasly with George Russell very, very, very close behind. So Q2 is go. Um, we currently have Valtteri Bottas, Charles Leclerc, I'm just going to say the two names, Verstappen, Gasly, Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Norris and Ricardo all out on track at the moment. Um, 
currently everybody bar well we don't have the information for Hamilton we do now um, everybody's on the medium it appears in, in Q2 and I do think we're going to see people try and qualify on the medium also just to mention uh, we had a message from the FIA that both Williams are under investigation for how they left the pit lane in Q1 so as I'm sure most people have seen whilst we were watching, they were practicing their um, their battle for supremacy with Haas for tomorrow <laughs> when when they were leaving the pit lane, and um, and it's safe to say that they were getting a little bit close for a safe pit lane exit. So we will await further information on that. Um, so running in, running into Q two. How do we think this is going to play out? Who do we think is going to get knocked out? Let's go to let's go back to you, Shan. Who do you think is going to get knocked out in Q two? Oh, no, <laughs> I oh god, <laughs> like oh this is not this is terrible. I oh no. Okay, I think that I'm worried about Esteban, and I, I am worried about Russell. And Geo, I'm well, generally speaking just worried about Geo and his career, but also I don't know <laughs> if he's gonna make it to Q3. No, yeah. that's a so I feel like I don't know why I feel like bad now, but sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Take Lynn, who do you think is gonna go out in Q2 or well, shall I say not make it to Q3? I always find like Q2 is hard to tell, right? Oh, I don't know. Uh, so I actually don't think Alpha will make it through either. Um, Do you mean Alpha Romeo or Alpha Tari? Alpha Romeo. Why is there so many Alphas? <laughs> 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 Sorry, yeah. Alpha Romeo. I don't think Geo or Raikkonen will make it through. Um, don't, don't really know about the rest. I would say like maybe one of the McLarens doesn't make it through. Would you put that Ocon in the universe? Maybe hmm? what? Would you put that in the universe that one of the McLarens will make it through? She was I'm joking. manifesting it. I'm just <laughs> thinking out loud. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really Q2 is hard. No, I, I agree. Q2 it, it can go a few ways. Um, Jawa, who do you think is gonna gonna make the swift exit? Um, probably both the Alphas, Ocon, Russell, and possibly Sonoda. I'd like to see both McLarens get through, even though Lando's got the penalty. He can help Dan in Q3 try and get um, as high up the grid as he can. So, Absolutely. And um, just, just, just from myself, I think, um, I think Ocon will go out. I think... I think both the Alfa Romeos will go out. I think Vessel will go out. Ooh. And I think, oh, it pains me to say, I think George Russell will go out and Sonoda will make it into Q3. I do, th- I, yeah, th- that, that Alfa Tari is just so quick. Hmm. But just a quick roundup of the action that happened whilst we were talking about that. Max Verstappen has set the bar once again with 116.4. Now, Lewis Hamilton is only 0.016 seconds behind him. He is right on his tail. And we then have the man who is off to Alfa Romeo, Valtteri Bottas, with, was 0.4 seconds behind, closely followed by Leclerc, who was a tenth behind him. Then Sergio Perez was right on the heels of Leclerc in P5. Then we have Danny Rick, Pierre Gasly. Kimi Raikkonen has put it eighth so far. With Carlos Sainz in ninth and Giovinazzi in tenth. Now, in the actual, as I say that, Lando Norris puts it eighth. So that knocks Giovinazzi into the elimination zone. And we're, we're, currently, we're currently watching Esteban Ocon go around as he enters the stadium section. Another personal best sector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see how Ocon does. Sorry, he might Sonoda's not... looking pretty good on that lap as well that he's currently doing. 
and yeah. whoa. Holy. whoa wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the, for, the benefit, okay. for the benefit for the benefit of our audio listeners, we just saw Sonoda put that off a tarry P3. Yeah. Wow. Ahead of Boris. Yeah. It's great. I love it. Sonoda to Mercedes confirmed. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes science then. P8. Apologies if I just ruined that. Gasly okay, so- stays ninth. And Bottas has done purple middle sector. He's had a yellow first sector. So Bottas has improved his time, but he stays fourth. he stays fourth. And Bottas he he had a storming second sector. Ah, oh, so because he, he even though apologies, sorry, Jared. Even though Bottas was yellow in sectors one and three, he won purple in sector two, and still made up two tenths, or a, or a tenth and a half. So, hmm. that, so anybody who is completely writing off Mercedes, I wouldn't just yet. <laughs> oh, there's more performance in the car. Absolutely, Joe. You were going to say I was going to yeah. I was going to say Yuki's on the soft tire, so that explains it when everyone else around him are on the medium. medium. So, right. Okay. <laughs> and um, just looking at the elimination zone, uh, Kimi Raikkonen is currently in P11. He has two tenths. Off Lando Norris, and then Antonio Giovinazzi is P12. He is. So, just... did you guys get the visual of the um, Aston Martin garage? Uh, I um, saw a, I saw a brief view of it. I didn't see. Yeah. Were they pulling Vettel in? Yes. It, yes, and I, and I was going to say Vettel has gone quite a bit slower with a lot. So I wonder if they're going to be having a quick look at his car because that that lap time Vettel has set is not representative of how quick he is, I think it's fair to say. Good job, Yuki. Mm. On the, but it, if, uh, if he gets through on those tyres, which I would be shocked to see him put in a faster time on a set of mediums, he will have an interesting strategy tomorrow because I'd imagine... Probably everybody else in the session will go through on the mediums. How many stops is the race normally in Mexico? Is it normally one or two? I think it is usually a one stop. Okay. But if someone's starting on the soft, they might have to two stop it to get rid of the softs, probably on about maybe as early as like lap five, lap six, because they're going to start chewing up big time. That's just me speculating, but... uh... I guess um, Esteban went on softs too, but he's in the yes. zone right now. Mm. Yes. So everybody was on mediums apart from Yuki Snowd, as we mentioned. And as Caitlin just said, uh, Esteban Ocon was also on softs, even though he was 1.9 seconds slower than Verstappen. I'm sorry, my dehumidor sounds like a cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> I have a space heater on, so I feel like... <laughs> so we have four and a half minutes or just over four and a half minutes left of Q2, and we see Ferrari preparing the chili man himself, Carlos Sainz, ready to head out on a set of looks like a set of medium tires for Sainz. So that, that looks like a set mm-hmm. of brand new mediums as well, because they are shiny. Shiny. So as we see signs head out, um, let's have a quick talk about Ferrari. They've certainly had a turnaround in form this year, especially after the um, the somewhat quite, well the rather dire twenty twenty season they had. Mm-hmm. They have they've definitely made significant improvements this year. Um, how do you think they're going to cope next year with, with the new regulations? Uh, let's go to you, Shan, for your thoughts on Ferrari. I actually think they're going to do better. Um, uh, we actually interviewed someone last week. Um, his name is Ross Furin, Furwin, and he like runs a fantasy Formula One app. But he was saying that uh, looking at the numbers and stuff, though, in terms of Ferrari versus McLaren, but also versus everyone else, McLaren will actually have the best um, experience, I guess, building within the cost cap. So 
uh, I think like Ferrari will do better, but I actually think if we listen to what Ross was saying and what he was hearing that McLaren will actually be the strongest. So um, I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, Caitlin and I have a lot of hot takes though on the management of Ferrari, which I think they just need to clean house and like fire some people (laughs) Um, (laughs) before real change can happen there. So well, I think it's safe to say that Ferrari have not had as much experience working with cost caps, given the amount of money they seem to get <laughs> just just for existing in Formula One. But let's let us let us let us not talk about that because you know uh, I'll probably wake up with the horse's head in my bed or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so out on track at the moment, we have all of the top ten, uh, and. In fact, I believe we have all 15 cars out on track at the moment looking at the grid. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, However, I'm squinting a bit and struggling to see. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so 15 cars around. Yeah, so Carlos Sainz has had a horrible first sector. I don't know what's happened, Um, but he was 2.8 seconds down on his first first sector. So it looks like he has backed off and he's probably going to recharge and go for another lap. Maybe traffic. There's a lot of cars on outlaps at the moment as quite, well. Quite possibly, yes. Um, it is worth pointing out, actually, we did see a very quick replay earlier that I did not talk about um, of Nikita Mazepin encountering a lot of traffic heading into what looked like turn two, which rather compromised his lap. Was it just that that compromised his lap, though? I didn't say I didn't say it was just I didn't say it was just that, <laughs> but also but but also given given the connections that family has, I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> yeah, not fair enough. If you want to hear other things about him, you can listen to Caitlin and I's podcast where we say we actually don't we we here. we try not to talk about him on ours. We put a we don't yeah, talk about we, him. We don't mention his name at all. It's not worth it, is it? <sighs> No. It, nah, nah. Not well, I've it. just I've just looked at the chat as well. We have we have someone else commenting in the chat. Um, apologies in advance if I get your surname wrong, but I'd like to say hello to Yusuf Thag as it. Yusuf, uh, if I butchered that, I can only apologize. <laughs> but it is lovely to see you with us. So oh. Oh, Sebastian Vettel, so close, yet, mm, yet so, so far. Ah, uh, the devastation. What's Lewis Hamilton peak? has oh, just Lewis. put it P1. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this yet. Hold on. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I am so far behind. Like, I think the timing is, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I'm Welsh. We sing a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw Lewis take number one. So am I like a minute behind you? <laughs> I don't I don't know, but something which you've just seen might have a bit of well, actually I don't think it's gonna have that much of an impact. No. It's all good. Who was that though? Oh god, that who was, was that? Uh, now, now, now that Shan has seen it, that was yes. Antonio. <laughs> now, now that she's seen it, that was Antonio Giovanazzi. <laughs> Huh. Very nearly put it in the wall. Quite, um, it looked like he was approaching the stadium section. As you see, George Russell cross the line. Oh, George, <laughs> Antonio, George, my heart bleeds for you. That was a valiant effort, but uh, was not to be. So, your knockouts from Q2. In P11, much to Sean's disappointment, was Sebastian Vettel. <laughs> and as I, as I say that, we just see a replay of the Antonio Giovinazzi crash. Well, crash, well, it wasn't really a crash. He just spun. Spun a little, yeah. Just did hashtag it's just Antonio things. Kiss. Yeah. Um, okay, so <laughs> your eliminations from Q2, we have Sebastian Vettel. In P11, much to Shan's disappointment. We have Kimi Raikkonen in P12, George Russell P13, Antonio Giovinazzi P14, and Esteban Ocon P15. Big talking point from that session, Lewis Hamilton P1, Max Verstappen P2. 
and there was n- there was no point no no nine seconds between them, and I don't think Verstappen did a second lap. Mm, nine thousandths of a second. Wow, that is. He's in third, y'all. <laughs> Ooh, it, says say that, that <laughs> it says here that Max went out for another lap on the soft tires. I don't know what that was all about. I wonder if it was a bank lap and he backed off when he realised he didn't need to. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he got most of the way around and realised there's no real risk here. Yeah. I'll no, start he... on the mediums. That's it. So they all would have, except for Sonoda, gotten through on the mediums, which is good. Yes. And... Yes, yeah, so I'm currently I'm watching a Petronas ad break. It's so interesting. Like I'm not. I, I don't know. I'm seeing poker stars. Which got Kinder surprise. Kinder surprise <laughs> chocolate. Is that the surprise I've got coming up after this ad, Jared? Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask Tom and Jared, mm-hmm. where are you guys like? Where are you based in the world? <laughs> so, I'm based in the UK. Um, I'm not in England. Before anybody says anything. <laughs> I am in the neighbouring country of England, which is called Wales. I live in the capital, which is called Cardiff. Um, I actually live right by the sea. Um, so that's, uh, and I am born and bred in Wales. I did live in England for six months, but I am, I am very, very Welsh. Uh, Jared? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. And that's 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 pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've been it's always, we've been um, in sorry, go on, chat. Well, yeah, I was just gonna in, say it's it, yeah, it's been rough there, I heard. We've been in yeah, lockdown for I think three months again this year, and we only just came out of it two weeks ago. So just slowly starting to get adjusted back into being social and seeing people around all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, Sean and Katie, you're from Canada, is that correct? Yeah, we're I... based in uh, Calgary, Alberta, so more on the west side, Caitlin. Like, if you guys have um, seen pictures of Banff, I've been to yeah. Edmonton before, so I'm familiar, kind of familiar with the, those parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. lovely people, yeah. but. It, it... <laughs> You know, certainly from my perspective, it is nice to have fans from, you know, we're all from different continents. So it's, uh, you know, it's different time zones for all of us as, as well. It's like, Jared, That's it's... That's what made me so nervous, though. Uh, I was like, what? There's like 8 p.m.? Like, what time is that for us here? <laughs> trying well, to coordinate everything. Oh, my at, goodness. At the moment, it is 10 past 9 in the evening in the UK. Yeah. And it has been dark for the last... Four and a half hours, I'd say. Wow, it gets dark pretty quick then, eh? Yeah. Well, we have... um, uh, At at, at the last weekend of of October, we have the... um, We we revert from British summertime to Greenwich Mean Time, so our clocks go back an hour. Um, Why that happens, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think that confused me a bunch um, last week when I was trying to work out times for um, or for the Texas podcast, and I was just like, yeah. "What?" Yeah, but then so, I worked it out. <laughs> yeah, so so in effect, Saturday last week, because um, I was actually playing Call of Duty when it happened, it, it hit one a.m. We had one a.m. for an hour, then when it got to two a.m., we then had one a.m. again for another hour. Hmm. So we we gained an extra hour, and then in March when they go forward, usually when the F one season starts, we lose an hour. So oh wait, does Australia not do daylight saving? Because we do it too. Yeah, we yeah, we, we do it too. Okay. We had um, we went forward an hour, I think, um, at the start of October. So we've got more daylight yeah. now. Yeah. Um, uh, I see. Which is nicer. I love it. <laughs> I love summertime because it's not as <laughs> depressing as winter. Well, if, if everything you've heard about the UK being famed for rain, uh, it has absolutely been like that all day today. Yeah. Well, went, the thing I... is, well, the thing is, Tom, like Melbourne weather is probably the closest thing in the world to British 
weather in terms of it just being grey and miserable. Like, I'm not saying it's exactly <laughs> the same, but it is, you know, the closest thing you'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Just like to point out, this is still an F1 podcast. We are just in an interlude until Q3. <laughs> yeah. Um, on my stream, they're showing an interview with Fernando Alonso. And, I mean, nothing like that, you know, I don't know. It's not, not interesting. Yeah. I lost a bit of grip. Yes, I'm sorry, MP13. Okay. Like, you know. Yeah. So we are running into Q3. Thoughts? How, how are we feeling about it? Who do you think is going to come out on top? I know we talked about... Unfortunately, to- I don't think it's Checo anymore. I think we have mm. quite the uh, um, no. Max and Lewis going on right now. I don't know who to pick for who's coming out on top between them, though. I'm, I am... For me personally, I am still going to say Lewis. Uh, no, I'm not. Why did I say that? I mean Max. <laughs> <laughs> Cut on my own head, then. Yeah, no, no. I, Lewis I, I, is in your head. I know. Yeah, so Lewis is probably in Max's head as well. To be fair, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. I, 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 do, I, I do think Max will not come out on top in this session. I think so too, and I think historically too, right? Like Lewis and Max pole positions. It's just it's always Max. Mm-hmm. We've never we've never had that though, have we? You know, because this, I think Max has got more poles this year than he's had in his in his whole career. Mm-hmm. It's mad. It's the most I polls I think. Red crowd. I think it's the most had... polls. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> no, go on, Jared. No, most polls I think Red Bull have had in a single season in the hybrid era. Oh, must be, hundred mm-hmm. percent. It must be the mo- the most polls they've had since what twenty thirteen probably. Mm. Okay, so we have a green light for Q three at the moment. Nobody has blinked. As I say that, yeah, no one's. As I say that, we have <laughs> four, five cars out on track. That's so funny. I'm so far behind. <laughs> 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 Yeah, nothing's changing. Okay, so okay, now they're sorry. yeah. So out of the out of the front of the drivers who are out, who's come up first? That looks like I believe that was Sergio Perez. Yes, we have Perez, then followed by certainly one of the Ferraris, then by Max. Mm-hmm. then by the other Ferrari, then both Mercedes. And in front of those two, we have both of the McLarens and both of the Alpha Tauris. So it certainly appears as if Bottas is giving a toe to Hamilton because looking at the timing chart, I don't know if, if, if uh, the rest of you can see that, but mm-hmm. that gap between Bottas and Hamilton on, on, that, on that live timing chart on the bottom right, the, the track out there, that looks like Mercedes are 100% going to be making Bottas give Hamilton a tow, which you'd expect. But mm -hmm, same as possibly Red Bull as well. And McLaren, I was going to say too. Yeah. They've all kind of gone out two by two. Yeah, I did notice that Verstappen overtook one of the Ferraris as he uh, just as he exited turn three. He went past whichever Ferrari was the lead Ferrari there. Charles? I think it was, yeah. Okay, so at the moment we have both McLarens and both Alpha Tauris on hot laps as Max Verstappen comes through the stadium section, sweeps around the final corner, ooh, has a bit of oversteer there and starts his flying lap. I wonder if that will cost him. We will see. Okay, so 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 yeah. So at the moment we have everybody on a flying lap, and I say everybody because the two Mercs are currently coming through just to start. Oh, took a bit too much curb there, Max. Yeah. Yeah. Not the tiniest of laps so far from Verstappen. He's going to want to go again. Whoa, Max. 
no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No. Definitely not the tidiest lap. So Valtteri Bottas has gone purple in Q1. Verstappen's just gone purple in Q2, taking it off his teammate. Oh, boy. Okay, so Sergio is on provisional pole. The moment. Okay. 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 Most Max importantly, yeah, but for how long? Because Bottas is on a steamer. And most importantly, Lewis Hamilton has not set any purple sectors. No. Oh, Bottas wow. currently two tenths quicker coming out. Whoa. Of the final. Yeah, you see that time, right? He's rare. Whoa. <laughs> Where's Valtteri been all weekend? Okay. And Lewis is, only, is one tenth off him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gauntlet laid down for Q3. <laughs> Valtteri Bossas into the 115s. 115.8. It's not fucking around, are No, with, <laughs> with, 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 with Lewis Hamilton just. Point one second behind him. Then Max Verstappen with a rather scruffy lap, 0.3 yeah. seconds behind, and then Perez a tenth behind him. Someone's had their porridge the this morning. <laughs> I think he said, he said his he's porridge. He's eating a lot of tacos, right? Maybe he's got that. Tacos, nice... Maybe some tequila, you know? <laughs> They can't drink and drive. No, it's afterwards. No. afterwards. Yeah, yeah, tequila. Just, say, yeah, we say that as we see a car going over the Heineken zero percent alcohol sign yeah. here. Yeah. I, I clarified. Don't worry. <laughs> Lando cutting the grass there as well. That yes, L- Lando had a I mean, big lock up into Q one. And Max just pretty much cutting over that um, turn yeah. three curb. I think. Oh. Yeah, not a good lap. Yeah, so he's definitely got performance. He can get out for the second run. So this is not over by any means yet. I mean, I'd be fine with Valtteri on pole. I think that would be fun. (laughs) Yep, still wanting Checo though, right? It'd be nice to have him, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Oh God, Lando, really not a good lap for him. Also, Pierre, top five right now. Not mm-hmm. bad. Ugh. I'm gonna miss Valtteri being on the Mercedes team. But Shanika and I were saying on our last podcast episode, <coughs> or the one before, like we're excited to see what Valtteri can bring to Alfa Romeo's social team because like they're not anywhere. Mm, Valtteri's true. all over the Mercedes one right now. He just yeah. has so much fun with it. I'm like, oh, it's great. It's so good to watch <laughs> Valtteri on TikTok. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so we have four and a half minutes left of Q3. Everyone's gearing up for their second runs. It's uh, it's for Stappens to get. It's uh, after he set that scintillating lap in Q1, has he peaked too soon? Let's hope not. (laughs) That's interesting. I'm hoping maybe (laughs) just to spice things up a little bit. Oh, I just feel for Lando though, hey? Like looking at these times, it's like, okay, everyone's like fairly close. And then it's like plus 20 seconds. Like, yeah, cool. I I believe Lando aborted his lap. Um, yeah. When he wanted to go grass. Yeah. And also, he's probably just factoring that he has got this engine penalty. Mm-hmm. Although, um, do we know how many positions he's going to be dropping? Is he going to the back of the grid or is he he's, just got to? Yeah. 
back of the grid because it's a complete um, it's a complete change. change. I think. Yeah. Okay. He was the last of the Mercedes PU runners to take this penalty, actually. So, yeah, if there was a lot of talk around Mercedes seeing if Hamilton was going to take one this weekend, um, it could prove to be very good that they didn't. Mm. But we still have we have three minutes left of Q three, and I can feel my heartbeat slowly rising. <laughs> As I anticipate, yeah, as I anticipate, uh, everyone silently react going. because I'm like a minute behind you. All. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like this. Just if... react with your faces, which is so terrible for the audio listeners. <laughs> if uh, if um, if you see my fist coming like this and the camera just fly off, Verstappen's <laughs> probably done something similar. <laughs> Oh, okay. I am nervous. I am nervous. After after watching the the oh, Wales rugby right. game earlier, my my nerves have only got a little yeah. bit left today. Yeah, you've got the shot, adrenaline yeah. pumping there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't know. Okay, no, I don't know what to do. Do we watch them or do we not watch them? Like what? Uh, give them we, better we, luck? We've got two minutes left. I'm sure. I'm sure for the benefit benefit of our audio listeners. <laughs> They'll understand if we are perhaps a tad quiet for the next two minutes. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Perez has a slipstream going, according to the closed captions on my screen. Who's in front of Perez? Uh, no Ferrari, I think. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely not Max, is it? No, Max no. is behind, yeah. Yeah. Noah's arc formation. Oh, because they're all in twos. Okay, got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Strangest captions, I tell you. There is yeah. something really satisfying about when you see a top ten with the with the teams. The teams, yeah. It's just a. Mm-hmm. It satisfies my OCD. Oh, Sergio's dad. Love you. Okay, so Perez begins his flying lap. The crowd again just the oh, RS slams the open. Oh, oh. The They're so excited. I just turn the volume up a little bit. All right. Trying not to look at the live timing screen because you know that's spoiled. I've got, I've got, I've got that, I've got that closed. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. Oh, so he, okay. he didn't improve his first. All right. What do we got here, people? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. One fuck. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> oh, okay. God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, indeed. Oh, who cut the corner? Did anyone else see that? Yes, yeah. I think. Okay. And just, of course, me. I, I'm like trying not to give much that. away. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm sorry, people that are listening on the podcast. I promise, next time I will make sure that I'm synced up a little bit better. Oh, <laughs> oh my word! This is unexpected. Have you all? <gasps> how, how close up are we? Shannon? I had the one, two, three finished. Yeah. I, I just don't. Saw... <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, well, 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 well. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, I have one and three finished. And two. Okay. Okay. Whew. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we got it. We got it pretty wrong. I got yep. it. So wrong. <laughs> well, Shani, you thought all... you well, you thought Lewis was gonna win, didn't you? I thought he would be on pole, but then yeah. when Valtteri, when he 
showed up, I was like, ah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> so, like, see Valter and Paul. But it sucks because you know that they're going to be like, okay, give it up for Lewis. Oh, right? So what happened to Max there at the end? He, Oh, no, that was Checo who took it. The- yeah, so, so Checo took avoiding action because Sonoda went off in front of him. Ah, shite. Oh, I thought that's... that was uh, I thought that was Max who went off when we saw it live. No, it, it was uh, so it was... so just 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 a recap Let's qualifying. See. We have ended up with a Mercedes one two, which I don't think anybody expected. And your pole yeah, position, fuck. Mr. Valtteri Bottas. Woo! With Lewis it. Hamilton P two, Max Verstappen P three, Sergio Perez P four, Gansley P five. And we then have Carlos Sainz P6 with Dan- Daniel Ricciardo P7. The rest of the results just come from my screen. Um, Lando Norris 10th. Yeah. Let's did just you talk- guys see Total Wolf just do his classic? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk about that quickly. Um, Jawas, we weren't expecting Mercedes 1 2, and we were not expecting Valtteri Bottas on pole, I think it's fair to say. No. Not at all, but he seemed to have the car hooked up through all the sectors. Like it was that first 100%. lap that he did in Q3 that was kind of what got him there. And then I think the second lap, he didn't improve his time, but he already had the margin that he needed. But Red Bull just so scrappy there in Q3. Like Max, I just saw the replay, he locked up. Um, in the stadium section on that final lap. So whether he was thrown off by the um, the Alpha Tauri and, and his teammate earlier on in the lap, who knows? But yeah, not what they would have expected. Oh my gosh, Absol- yay, Valtteri. Absolutely. So, Shan, you, you sound like a not-so-secret Valtteri Bottas fan. Honestly, you should just see him on TikTok. He's so fun. Um, no, I'm so excited. This is... I think it's good when it's not predictable, right? And I mean, it is a little predictable because we know that they're going to let Lewis or, you know, we know. But I think overall for a stadium where Red Bull was really showing well in Q1, like, look at this. This is this is good. Well, and like they were showing the past five years who was sitting on pole and only once was at Mercedes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that was... uh... That was quite the session, and uh, oh, look at that! Um, uh, okay, definitely not what we expected this week. This weekend, however, if we revisit a conversation from earlier when we were talking about the slipstream, mm-hmm. so we have Valtteri Bottas giving a slipstream to Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton giving a slipstream to home hero Sergio Perez. How much do you think that's going to sort of play into a factor tomorrow? Do you think that the Mercedes are going to slot in or do you think they're going to go down the straights almost side by side to try and break the toe and not block but hinder the Red Bulls performance? What do you think about what do you think about the start tomorrow Caitlin? Oh, um, so happy. I do think Mercedes will be talking about what they can do to just everything they can to not let the Red Bulls pass whether it's like whatever they have to do if it's going to be both of them one in front of the other or if they p- both try and do a block i really don't know but they will do mm-hmm. total's going to be like okay just what do we do to keep max and Checo behind us so yeah, yeah it's I it's agree. going to be quite the scrap into turn one i'm sure you agree shan yeah 100 percent and but they're gonna to have to be careful though right we we know what happens if lewis um and max get into it even a little bit so they'll have to be careful but the same thing goes for mac uh lewis and valtry right like if you're going at those speeds in such a tight turn even if you're trying to block someone like you never know what could happen so it's just got to be careful because i mean i personally would love to swing, see it swing like in a different direction obviously I like how close it is for the rest of the season. So it'd be nice to have Lewis win this one, maybe Max win the next one, and we're just constantly sitting on the edge of our seats. Absolutely. And um, Jared, a bit of a turnout for the books today. Oh, <laughs> it's going to um, be interesting turn one tomorrow, but yeah, I think the whole race should just unfold. It, it shouldn't be a procession, I think, because... Where did Lewis start last time in 2019? Because 
he ended up winning that race. He wasn't on pole position. So I don't think pole is going to quite guarantee you anything in this one. Absolutely. Uh, no, absolutely. I will double check the race results for, for the qualifying results for 2019. Um, got to be honest, I can't remember offhand. Was it got a DHL ad? So in 2019, Lewis Hamilton only qualified fourth. Um, the Stafford... Checker qualified fourth, so he'll Yay. win this race. <laughs> yeah. <I like> it. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, we're fine with. We're like fine with a Checo, Valtteri, whatever. Um, but in fact, yeah. I, I believe 2019 was the year that Verstappen put it on pole, but then got it taken away from him because he didn't slow for yellow flags after Bottas' accident. And it actually right. started P1. Mm-hmm. So Lewis started a net P3 that year. Oh my, what a qualifying session. That was. Uh, that was certainly quite something. It, it, we we had drama in Q one with um, with Stroll going off uh, and having quite quite a nasty impact in the wall. Um, and then the the battle of the Williams and the Haas, even in qualifying with them going side by side in the pit lane, which was still awaiting the FAA results of. Then Alonso going out in Q one, George Russell making it to Q two, the Alfa Romeos making it to Q two, and then Q three the the big. Almost shock, Valtteri Bottas putting it on pole ahead of Lewis Hamilton in P2 and title contender Max Verstappen in P3. So on that's my stream. I don't know if you all have interviews going right now, but on my stream, uh, they're interviewing Lewis and he's just talking about Valtteri the whole time and how great Valtteri's done. So I think that's kind of sweet, but yeah, he's a uh, he's. He's, he's probably just making sure that he knows his place for tomorrow. I think. A little bit, maybe. Mm, yeah. So let's uh, let's let's wrap this up because it, we've been going for almost two almost two hours now. Um, just like to say thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you to everybody listening, everybody watching. Be sure to like us on Facebook. We are the F1 Chronicle. Follow us on Twitter, which is at F1 Chronicle. If you want to catch us live as the show, sorry, and if you want to catch us live as the show goes out, subscribe to us on YouTube. We're also available on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Verbal, Omni Studio, Pocket Cast, and the F1 Chronicle website. Before I go and before we all depart, I'd just like to give everybody a chance to plug their own podcast. So, Jared, do you want to do a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, you can find me on Twitter at Hit the Apex Media. I do host the Hit the Apex podcast on my own. We do an episode every two weeks now, or when we're doing this triple header, it'll be every week. Talk about F1, about the V8 supercars here as well, and occasionally the odd MotoGP as well if I if I feel like it. So yeah, please check them out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Caitlin and Shan, I believe you are a package deal. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yeah, yeah so uh, Caitlin, oh, you am I on echo right now? That, I, I, you sound fine. Yeah, I that was so. just a tad loud. Oh, okay, it's, it's really, really like, oh. loud for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Shanika and I run a podcast called Get Checkered. Um, we have an episode out every week. Um, so whether it's like after the race or we have some weekly roundup episodes as well um so you can find us we're on instagram twitter uh tiktok <laughs> trying to stay relevant we ha- we have our <laughs> videos up on youtube um yeah yeah and uh another thing if anyone that's listening is in calgary and would like to watch the formula one race tomorrow in person we will be at the Hudson's downtown at 12 in the back room with a bunch of other Formula One fans. So you're all more than welcome to come. Lovely. And just for myself, I am Tom. I am part of the Everything F1 team. Uh, we have our podcast, which is the Everything F1 podcast. We also have our social media handle, which is at Join the F1. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh we also have a youtube channel which is everything f1 and our facebook page which currently has twenty five thousand people following which still blows my mind is 
the which is everything F1, and our Facebook group is the Everything F1 Paddock. All that's left for me to say is thank you so much for listening, watching, joining. We will be back tomorrow from 9 p.m. to review the race of the Mexican Grand Prix. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for having us. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. We had a good time.